we have a few questions from you guys on Instagram. Peter, PK Fitness. Oh, how do you price one-to-one -one coaching versus group coaching? We have an article on this, Peter. We do. We have loads of stuff on we this. We do. Including the main training that we keep referencing Ooh. all of the time. That's the best thing in the world. But in general, like, well, our group coaching, we suggest about £100 a month for lots of different reasons. One-to-one, -one, I, I, it largely depends on um, how well your group coaching is going. I think if you imagine your group coaching's full and somebody's like, can I work with you one-to-one -one for £110 a month? You'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so you can start, you can pretty much chart, your one-to-one -one is your time. So it's what is your time worth to you? Like you are, it is the 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 opportunity cost of what else could you be doing with that time if you've got a busy group coaching program. Um, it doesn't make sense for you to be charging at le any less than at least double, really. Yep. So if you have a look on propane-business.com, reason being we couldn't afford propanebusiness.com because it well we, I mean, we, we could afford it but it was like 40 grand so we thought not a good use of of money to get rid of a a dash so yeah anyway go on that website <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see the 100 pound an hour rule which is how to price your coaching so it, it as johnny says it's looking at what is the time cost of delivering your coaching and work backwards and then figure out a price based on how much time it'll cost you. And then it means that if you get someone sign up for group or someone sign up for one-to-one, -one, there's no sense of like, oh, I wish they'd signed up for the other one because that's going to be a ball ache to deliver. Because if you're doing that, mm -hmm. if that's the way you're thinking, then you're pricing it too low. Yep, definitely. Next question. Oh, we've got a whole bunch of them from Fabio T93. Fabio. Fabio. Had time off, lost muscle, Gain, gained fat. How to set up training and nutrition now that I'm back? Have you not got a? I know this is. I know we. This is always the answer <laughs> to these questions. But you, um, <laughs> you listen to content to be directed to other bits of content. But you did a a video about like what happens when you stop training for six months. Yeah. Did you re, did you cover like reintroducing training? I, I think I did briefly, but just the the very the cliff notes. And Fabio, I would recommend having a look at the article as well. But the cliff notes is like when you get when you get straight back into it you can pretty much eat at maintenance and just get back into the rhythm of training and you will see yourself positively recomp so you might not need to do anything too drastic just build your habits back and then after a month of getting back into the swing of training the initial kind of doms you know after that first leg day after time off is brutal yeah um then you'll be able to make a decision of like, do I want to get leaner for a bit or do I want to just carry on with muscle gain? I think my one tip for this, and I'm always guilty of not listening to my own advice in this respect, but the, the most important thing to regain is momentum and consistency because the, the doms, the frustration, the like the lack of progress, they all come from sporadic training. And if you just drop back into like, three days a week, start laughably light, start laughably easy, make it so that you don't like train once and then go, oh God, I've got to train again. Make it so like, actually that was quite good fun. Slowly build the momentum, slowly add the weight back. And before you know it, you'll be back to where you were. Yeah, exactly. So don't, don't knock yourself on the first session back. <laughs> Just don't knock yourself in general. Pretty good advice. Yeah, it's good, good strategy. Um, mm. Fabio has also asked most annoying person on socials right now. So this is a good question. There are some annoying people on socials and I think if they're just annoying because they're annoying, <clears throat> block them. You don't need to consume their content. But I, personally, the people who I have found annoying on socials in the past trigger something in me where I think they're doing better than I think they deserve. And that's really point shining the light back on my, um, inner shadow parts of me that I'm not, haven't made peace with. So I think it's quite a useful thing to look at someone who is annoying and be like, why am I annoyed by them? Maybe it's still legitimate. You know, I get annoyed at people that give medical advice online who have no medical qualifications because it's dangerous and it's irresponsible. But I'm probably also annoyed because I think, well, I spent seven years training to do that. And I still don't give medical advice online because I, because I know how dangerous an individual that should be 
and here's this guy trying to jump the queue. Yeah, I think that's it, isn't it? It's the feeling that people are listening to him. And for, to get people to listen to me on that, I had to go go through the proper route and do things properly, and someone's like circumvented that. The the people, and I've still really never been able to figure out why it annoys me, but it's people who really like soapbox and like talk endlessly about issues, like this very similar issues. Every every day I like check our social media, there's a story or a post from them about some like some social issue typically and it's always the same one um and i <laughs> i think the thing that i can't reconcile is like if you took the energy that you're putting into like posting to your couple of hundred followers about this and like went and joined an organization that's doing something about that and really got you really get stuck in direct that energy there you wouldn't have time to post on social media because you would actually be making a difference about the thing but but everybody else and I guess that it's our fault for having for following them, right? But everybody else just has to listen to that. It's moaning, basically, and complaining. Yeah. I think that's what I find. But I don't know what it is. I agree with you that it, when things trigger you, it's like it's something about you. I don't know what that is, though, because I don't, I don't wish that I was doing that. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I, so, I, I think uh, some people say, like, any person who annoys you is just because that's something in yourself that you're resisting. I, I don't think it's as simple as that because there, there's certainly people that are just annoying and they don't you don't have traits that reflect them that but um it's just annoying yeah it's just frustrating behavior yeah yeah um but that there's a similar concept which ali abdel talks about which is that so in in talking about him leaving medicine he's like well I, I said that i wanted to save lives but actually if i really want to save lives if i become a millionaire and then donate a load of money to the malaria foundation and buy mosquito nets it's a very unsexy but very effective way to save lives yeah so it depends whether you want to save like a few lives that you're very involved in the process or like volume are you going mm. after like total numbers like how many lives can i say it's, well if you optimize for the, the, the cpm then yeah mosquito nets well, you've got way. to optimize for something haven't you yeah you've got to put the facebook pixel <laughs> somewhere so great question, Fabio. Hopefully that is helpful. Um, I'd like to hear who you find most annoying on socials right now. Um, how to warm up for a full body session feels like it takes forever. Yeah, some people just go overboard with warm ups. I think get your heart rate up and then whatever your first movement is, do something related to that movement. It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. Yeah. As long as you've got the necessary Very range. Hard. The I think the only thing that sometimes makes me think differently to that is I'll I still try and do like some mobility work every day because I have found when I'm consistent with little bits it makes a difference to injury risk. So I'll do sometimes like and I always follow I mainly just follow what Kelly Starrett says because I find him very very funny and trust him. Um, so he he'll make me do like a hip mobility exercise and then he always does a test retest that's his like main structure to sort of illustrate what you're doing. And I will gain, like, he'll be like, so, you know, test this, test flexion on this hip and this hip. And I've gained, like, inches of flexion side to side from doing something that took five minutes. I'd love to gain inches. And then I think, well, ha hang on. <laughs> hang on. Like, if I'm going into training with this, like, restricted range, is that really the best idea? Like, is that? But it doesn't feel, like, prior to doing the exercise, it doesn't feel like I've got restricted range. You see what I mean? Yeah. That's the only like niggling doubt I have over like, should I be more thorough with my warm up? But in general, I completely agree with you. Like, sweat and then prepare for the movement, the specific movement, and you'll probably be okay. But I do wonder how many injuries I've had have been because I've been slightly restricted in one joint without really realizing it going into the session. Just putting pressure on and something up the chain. Cause a compensation before you know it, I've broken my toe. <laughs> I mean, my, my toe break was traumatic. So trauma. trauma, yeah. Direct trauma to the, to the Poly toe. trauma. Radiator? Was it radiator? No, it was gymnastics. I, so yeah. I actually injured both toes, but I've only fractured one. <laughs> Very sore. <laughs> I can imagine. Does it hurt to, can you squat? I can squat, but Probably just, not. well, I have to have my weight on my heels, but 
Well, actually, speaking, practice. speaking of which, Fabio has said, if you have a sports injury, do you see a physio, osteopath, or a doctor? I never know who to go to. I've asked you this question before. Like, when is it not physio? When is it GP? Yeah. And vice versa. It, I think I have. So I tell you what, I'm going to ask you a series of things and we'll just see what fine. you say. A series of example injuries. <laughs> okay. My, the... I've got, I've got a great one. I've got a great one. I have a swelling at the back of my knee. Medical. Go to a doctor. Interesting. You, so I, I've Googled, I've Googled have it. Have you got I've Googled it. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no. This isn't real. So I've, I've Googled it and I think it says, it all says like Baker's cyst. And so I think that's probably what it is. And it says to go to a physio. So I'm going to go to a physio. What do you think? Is that a bad so idea? My, my differentials for swelling on the back of the knee would be, yeah, Baker's cyst or a popliteal aneurysm, which... Bless you. Both of which are surgical problems, but you would need to be referred by your GP. Okay. I'll think of another one. My... Um... My left shoulder, like I'm just unable to get it. Like I can't raise my arm up past my head. Okay. So it sounds like a frozen shoulder. Adhesive capsulitis. To be fancy. <laughs> Bless you. So, so I I think in that case you would probably you could go GP and get referred to a physio. Or if you're a big pants money boy, just go straight to the physio. Okay. Interesting. Final one. Um when I, I'm like walking, I like walk to work in the morning and like when I get to work, I sit down for a bit and I stand up, I go to the coffee machine and my hip like clicks and clunks and like sometimes feels like it gives way a little bit. Mm. Should I go to the physio or the GP? Physio. Interesting. Yeah, that's a very... Why? So I, I suppose you could say like if you are considering surgery, if you're 60 years old and you you know you think it's osteoarthritis if there's like a hotness or swelling or you feel like it's a septic joint or a new onset kind of rheumatoid arthritis or something then you know that's that's more of a medical thing isn't it but if it's like you've got a, a new a new pain or clunk on particular movements physio yeah and then a good physio will be able to say ah this seems a bit more medical it, it's very difficult because because these are kind of testing my like they're not they're not obvious really um but which i think is the problem right mm. especially if you know like a little bit about human anatomy like you're a personal trainer for example and you think like it might be this yeah like i remember reading this thing one time that said that suggests it might be this i'll go to a physio but actually it's a symptom of something more serious and that you wouldn't know because you don't have the medical training. I think my personal very advanced um, decision-making framework is if it feels like it's in me, <laughs> yeah. so in this bit, in that bit, in here where my, my organs are or in here in my head mm -hmm. where my skull is, but inside my skull, <laughs> then I probably go to the doctor. If it's something on like my limbs, um, or, or my skin, skin's doctor. If it's like, feels like it's a muscle or a tendon or a joint. Uh, and I, when I press it, it hurts. I'll go see the physio. That's very reasonable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I normally also, I'm sure you're the same, but, but for very different reasons. When I go to the physio, I, I have a thought in my head of like, I think it's probably going to be, like I'll Google it, I'll research it. And actually a lot of my, human anatomy knowledge has come from injuring various parts of me over the years, reading about that joint or reading about that thing, learning about all the different things that can go wrong with that. And then you go to the physio thinking, well, is it runner's knee? Not sure. I'm sure he'll tell me. And then it's always just glute function, isn't it? Nine times out of 10. You'll be given some therabands to do that, that one. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly. sideline clamshells kickbacks so fabio has also asked i think we can bash through the rest of these in the rest in this let's podcast go. let's do it we've got six minutes life hack for learning lots of information e.g language translations that's over to you yeah anki anki is exactly what you're <clears> looking for fabio because it's learning lots of modular data 
particularly languages. Um, and then I think to boost it, you want some kind of immersion type um, strategy, like using Duolingo or that kind of thing. Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone, yeah. Tapes, you've got to get the tapes, only the cassettes. <laughs> Plug it into your car. Um, life hack for making peeling onions less of an arse ache. Put Just a spoon buy... in your mouth. Okay, put a spoon in your mouth. That's the old wives' solution, and it's, I think it's because it makes you breathe through your mouth, and so you you no, suck it's... away the onion smell before it gets into it's your eyes. Breathe through your mouth. Uh, what you have to breathe through your mouth because there's a spoon in it. You wouldn't just breathe through your nose. Yeah, I suppose that's for chopping onions, but peeling onions is different, isn't it? I would just buy frozen diced onions. Pay the premium. Yeah, it's like twenty p, isn't it? I yeah. I don't remember last time I peeled an onion. I'm afraid, Fabio. Yeah, it's so cheap. Oh, fro frozen frozen diced onions are so inexpensive. Well, there's the life hack. It, yeah, this is the the Mister Money Mustache thing. Yeah, I'd listen. I'd listen to him. He's on the Tim Ferriss podcast. His his whole thing is like look for tiny little financial increments in your life that add big improvements in in the quality of it. So like little things you can up. Oops, like not hitting the mic when you're recording a podcast. <laughs> little tiny upgrades to like buying diced chopped onions instead of like how many times a month are you like sat there crying and peeling and having you hit the mic again <laughs> having your fingers smell of onion afterwards remove that problem what's that worth it's definitely worth a couple of quid a month isn't it absolutely definitely. that is a another top hack so get some diced chopped onions also uh if you do have oniony hands or garlicky hands let's say you don't if you don't follow that life hack rub them on steel yeah don't know you why can get works. things that attach to sinks, can't you? That people like you can get like like the magnetized to the back of the sink that you then rub. Steel soap, yeah. Steel soap. Next question is from also Fabio. Final one from Fabio. Oh, <laughs> how does go. how does Yusuf ensure he doesn't re-injure his back? A great question. Have a look, Fabio, at my article called "How I Fix My Chronic Back Pain." If you just Google that with propane, it's a compendium on how to do that with links to the great interview we've done with Stu McGill. Um, the short answer is stop picking the scab. Long answer is follow the recovery ladder that I've laid out in the article. There's no other way to answer that question, is there? That's not just fobbing off. That's like, that is a massive answer. We cannot possibly give a shorter one. Yeah. I mean, even just those two bits, you can go away and do that, but... I think have a look at the article, especially if you've got back pain. It's worth the 20 minutes to read it. Uh, Jason Fishburne, how can I test if my chosen niche, me three years ago, is a good one? Jason, I I feel bad for you now because we we really are pointing towards <laughs> content on every question now. <laughs> but we, we have a, a video that in podcast land will be out already. Oh, do we? Do we really? I yeah. can't even remember. Am I in the video? Yeah. <laughs> when did we record the video in real land? In real land, two weeks ago. Wow. So That's terrible, isn't it? I enjoy that, Jason. That. Subscribe to the channel and it will solve all of your problems. And final two, Kieran Purcell. How come the podcast has changed names on Spotify? We have two podcasts, Kieran. So, yes. Has it changed names? No. I think Those it's Kieran. We're, we're linking to, yeah. So one is called Grow Your Online Fitness Business, which is this one. And then if you search Propane Fitness Podcast, that's the more fitnessy type stuff. Mm. The technical term. And then the final one. Revive nutrition recovery. This better be a good question. My man. I'll be, I'll be furious if this isn't a good question. Uh, Whoever's asked you're, this. You're, you're going to be furious, Johnny. You, uh, uh, for, well, because it's antithetical to your principles as a human, as a man. <laughs> He's asked, what are the headphones that you mentioned a while back? I forgot to take a screenshot. <laughs> Is it AirPods? Is it Apple AirPods? It must it, be. It, it, oh, unfortunately, it is the Tozo NC2s. Currently 
going for like 34 quid. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, as good as Apple AirPods. Pros. AirPods. Pros. Pros. That's casting shade, that. But pros is the squidgy oh, ones, not the not the over ear ones. Correct. Yeah. These ones. As good as them, probably not as good as the Max. Well, I think it's a different it's a different product. It's like saying an iPad. It's like saying a MacBook's better than an iPad or vice versa. Like they're not really designed to do the same thing. Mm. I don't think. It, the thing that I'll I don't think I'll ever understand is that you are because you can make the same argument. Oh, you're gonna shoot this down. Oh no. Okay. You can make a very similar argument for like why would you not buy the Google Pixel phone or the Samsung phone? Because it's like similar features, does the same thing, much cheaper. And your argument, I, I suppose, will be yes, but like things in the Apple ecosystem integrate with things in the Apple ecosystem. That's the true. The same can be said for AirPods. Yeah, and, and actually that's that's the one thing that Tozo N C twos will never be able to Full integration. Because what, only... what you're buying them on price, right? Like you're buying them because you feel like and it's the same reason that everybody who has an Android gives, isn't it? No one who has an Android will flex on like, yeah, but look at the operating system. Yeah, true. Like the, the continuity of an iPhone is well worth the money. I think there's very little like the Tozo you like what what do you want in terms of continuity of earphones you want to put them in your ears and for them to connect to the device and i've never had yep. that problem with them so i can't think what could be improved and i've got an alfred hotkey for switching to mac or iphone okay so you've, you've jimmy rigged the it's like someone who's got a pc and they're running like a mac whoops we had a technical error there johnny was about to say running a hackintosh luckily that was the end of the podcast so thank you for bearing with us speak to you next week <laughs>